Hello and welcome to True Crime Diary, in which we look back through the annals of true crime to discuss events that took place on this week in history. I'm your host, Mark Decano, and with me as always are my friends, Jed Lester. Hello. And Rue Turner. Hello. We want your reviews. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review and preferably five stars. And if not, you can always email your review to us at stuff at truecrimediary.co.uk or through our Facebook page or Instagram account. And links to all of those are available on our website, www.truecrimediary.co.uk. And in appreciation of every five-star review, we'll give you a shout-out in a future episode. The date we're looking at this week is the 28th of January, and on this date in 1953, Derek Bentley was hanged for being a party to the murder of Police Constable Sidney Miles, despite not committing the crime, while Christopher Craig, the perpetrator of the killing, at 16, was too young to hang. Do you know this story? I do, from being in the news, like, 10 years ago-ish. Oh, God, yeah. When... Derek Bentley's sister was campaigning to have him pardoned, possibly. But I mainly know it from the song by Elvis Costello called, <laughs> which I thought was in the last 10 years, but apparently was released 31 years ago, um, <laughs> called Let Him Let Him Dangle. Let him dangle. Bentley said to Craig, let him have it, Chris. They still don't know today what he meant by this. Craig fired the pistol but was too young to swing, so the police took Bentley and the very next thing let him dangle, let him dangle. Bentley had surrendered, he was under arrest, when he gave Chris Craig that fatal request. Let him have it, Chris! Craig shot Sidney Miles, he took Bentley's word, the prosecution claimed, as they charged them with murder. Little uh, half rhyme there. Come off it, Hovis. You do better than that. The anyway, that effectively those <laughs> two verses are the entire <laughs> are the entire. Uh, and story. now we can all go home. <laughs> so we'd better start from the beginning, yes. I suppose, to fill in the, the actual story. Well, uh, yeah. So what happened? You put it there, but Chris Craig too young to hang. He was sixteen. Derek Bentley was nineteen. Uh, Chris Craig had decided that he was a criminal. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Hoodlum. Okay. Oh, okay. He was quite the um, the Jimmy Cagney type, you know? Right. He thought himself as a gangster. I mean, he was a punk kid, that kind of yeah, arrogant. Yeah. 16. Yeah. But he, um, the gun that was used in the shooting was his. And where are we talking about in England? We're in Croydon, South London. South, South London. London. Yeah, so they hang it there from there. Yeah, local boys. So Chris Craig essentially befriended Bentley, and right. Bentley was uh, the submissive of the two to Craig's arrogance and leadership. Bentley was, um, he had a child's mental age. So he was easily persuaded. Yeah, he was persuaded, ma- manipulated. He wanted a, a heavy. Yeah, it was an old it was an know. older boy, but he was easily manipulated. So Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he responded to the excitement and the adventure Craig was promising kind of thing. Mm. Sure, sure. It was like the the movies of the 30s, you know, the gangster movies. That's how Craig was acting. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's roman- romantic, yeah. you know. Every time I hear the phrase Bentley and Craig, the, I think of a 70s folk duo <laughs> 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 uh, from, who had some hits. Um because in I don't know why, but I because in the seventies there were pop and folk duos. I don't think there are now. And when I say in the seventies, I mean who just used their surnames. The band was. Uh, are you thinking of Simon and Garfield? Well, I am, but I'm also thinking of uh, <laughs> I, the main one. I think of see Bentley and Craig, if they were real, were a kind of they had a hit once. And it got to number nine, and and you know, and it, so for instance, my the one that I get confused about, and I literally get confused about, is do you remember um, "Summer Breeze" <laughs> makes uh-huh. me feel fine? See, I think that was Seals and Crofts, Bentley Craig, Seals Crofts. Um, it's just I, I just get it all mixed up. So. Right, for instance, last yeah. week or last episode, <laughs> Captain and Tennille. 
Yes. That's a crime duo, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I mean, Peters and Lee, uh, to coin a phrase. <laughs> the, Peters and Lee. That could be a bloodthirsty cowboy yeah. duo from the 1870s. <laughs> Cowboys, now. Peters and Lee. <laughs> the, um, but anyway, I can't get past the fact that I'm convinced Bentley and Craig had a top 10 hit in 1974. <laughs> Uh, and they both play acoustic guitars. They went to a uh, warehouse in Croydon and they were going to rob it. That was the plan. They were going to burgle the uh, What sort of warehouse. produce did they have in the warehouse? It was a sweets <laughs> warehouse. So that's, I mean, it's a classic, it's a classic child's sweets. crime, isn't it? Let's go burgle a sweet shop. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. They were just going to nick a load of sweets. Well, I think they were going for like the... Cash box or something, whatever they had inside. Uh, okay. It was a where it was a, a liquor of all sorts. <laughs> a thousand blackjacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. A thousand blackjacks. Net worth. Net worth. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> so they were trying to find a, a way in. They were on. They got onto the rooftop and they were trying to find a way in that way. Okay. Um, and this was basically a local warehouse. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. Right, okay. um, but they were spotted uh, while they were on the roof from a from a neighbouring window, and the, this person called the police. They phoned the police and they said, "I'm pretty sure there's a uh, '70s folk duo." On the roof. <laughs> um, you might want to come and. Uh, did you do you remember in 15 years' time when the Beatles played on the roof, <laughs> Carnaby Street? <laughs> the Beatles? No, they haven't. They don't exist yet. So, so a policeman turned up. Detective Sergeant Fairfax, he turned up and made it onto the roof. And when he was there, stood in front of Bentley and Craig. Bentley surrendered almost immediately. Okay. And Fairfax said to Craig, hand over the gun, lad. Or was that effect? At which point Bentley shouted out, let him have it, Chris. Let him have it, Chris! Yes, the famous phrase. Craig fired. <laughs> He shot Fairfax in the shoulder. I'm a cop, you idiot! And then Bentley told Fairfax that Craig had uh, more ammunition. Bentley had on him, he had a knife and a knuckle duster, which he never used or attempted to use. He didn't take them out of his pockets. Yep. And he, because he'd surrendered, but but he chose not to. Exactly. At this point, uh, a number of more uniformed police officers turned up and made their way onto the roof. The first one to make it to the roof was Constable Miles. Basically, yeah, they got he got onto the roof and was immediately shot between the eyes by Craig. Crumbs. Wow. I mean, presumably he knew it was a policeman. Yeah, exactly. Did he? Yeah. Well, he must have done. Well, it was, in, it was in uniform. They were all in uniform. That was a bit of a kind of hot... Speaking of Jimmy Cagney, Hollywood, uh, gangstery stuff, that was a bit of a crack shot. What? Uh, <laughs> like, perfect movie, yeah. movie uh, scene. You'd think image, it would be. But, but he wasn't exactly holding like the latest technology and weaponry, was he? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Well, was he not? Far, far. It was from a Colt revolver, that. wasn't it? That would been he'd sawn off the barrel, so because he couldn't fit it in his pocket. Yes. So he cut the barrel off. Yeah. And he'd filled it with an all sort assortment of different caliber bullets exactly. that he'd filed to fit at home. Yeah, exactly. Some of which would have probably just rattled about in the barrel. Right. So would it have been the classic uh, yes, revolver yeah, six shooter. Yeah. gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then just ahead, near the end of the nozzle. The barrel. <laughs> What's it called? Barrel. The nozzle. Um, <laughs> the barrel, yeah, yeah. It literally, it just stopped straight away. It meant like full on, you've got handle, you've got revolver and trigger, and then it just stopped because he yeah, saw that Yeah, it's about halfway bit down. Off. Like there's a bit that sticks out at the bottom of the handle. Yeah, after the oh, trigger, halfway, and then right, there's okay. an extender yeah. of barrel. So the point, the point of the barrel, yeah, is, is to is spin direction, to spin the bullet, so it goes in a nice true line to the target. Like a Ex- yeah, yes, exactly. rugby ball yeah. kind of. Yeah, right. Okay. So if it doesn't do that, so it just, the chances, especially if you've got a loose yeah pellet, the in the, the the length of the barrel, the length oh, of the barrel okay. gives it direction. And then the rifling inside gives a spin, yes. and that gives you accuracy to maintain that direction. But then, if the bullets don't fit, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're, they're not. Then neither of those things are going to have any effect on them. It's just going to come out flying in any which oh, I see way. What you mean? Yes, yes, yes. 
So that killing was totally and utterly. Yeah. I mean, fluke. a policeman tested the gun later, mm. and it would shoot six feet in either direction from twenty yards. Yeah. <laughs> so if it God. literally, not, not only was um, g- shooting miles between the eyes not a crack shot, it's equally as likely he was pointing six feet away from the no, and of course, to no. make that shot. Right, right, right. And it would it would have been dark, like completely dark, and all right, fine. He would have yeah, no LED floodlights on the street, but he presumably. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And he presumably now the policeman probably had a torch, so he knew the general direction to fire. But yeah. it was just the. Yeah. I mean, it would have been million. as accurate if he just had a handful of bullets right, and threw them at him. You know, it would have yeah. been as likely to hit in the same spot. You know, as right, right. What with his with yeah, his arm? Yeah, if he literally just thrown. Right, that was a, any one of those, you know, would have hit in the same place. It was just no way of bit calling right, well, accuracy. Might as well have used a blunderbuss. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Wow. So he, right? So there you go. That's the end of him. Yeah. And then what? Other policemen turned up? Or? Yes. Well, Craig uh, kept firing till he ran out of ammunition. I've only six days. Oh, reloaded a few times. Yeah, but again with mismatched ammunition. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Finally, he ran out of ammunition. He was obviously he was cornered. Um, he jumped from the roof onto a greenhouse. Oh God! But he had to go to a hospital because he fractured his, his spine in the process. I mean, I suspect that he got away lightly, actually. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't know how high it was, but to, even if it was one story and he landed on a greenhouse, that's bad enough. Oh, it was thirty feet. It was a quite a drop. Wow. Okay, so yeah. it's third story then, really? Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, typical uh, stories about yeah, nine yeah. foot. So. Yeah, onto uh, onto grass is bad enough. Yeah, onto concrete <laughs> is bad enough. Onto a green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, onto yeah. glass, sheet glass. glass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. So he was well. He wasn't running away anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> no, definitely not. Right, right. Yeah, so obviously he, he was in custody. He was taken to the hospital. Bentley was already in custody on the rooftop. Yes. But he was very like, unhappy with the police force and the man in general, isn't he? Because I think for, for days afterwards, and even when he was in the hospital, he had no remorse and was very unpleasant towards any officers. Yeah, Craig, we're talking about. But his brother, his brother had been put in prison two months prior, hadn't it? I think his brother had just been put down. Put Not down. in the sort of puppy sense. <laughs> but... <laughs> sure, sure. Well, hence why he's not overly inanimate. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think he had any respect for police or, or uh, you know. No, well, he's a lag, isn't he? He's a he's got no yeah, respect sure, for sure. police or the law or anything. The man, or the man. Yeah, he was a stick a it to the man. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so right, okay. So let's um, in this we've got a grand jury of. Three, which is quite a good number because it's odd. The let's d- say individually, d- off the cuff, without any um, warning, without any explanation, or yeah, or warnings, judgment only. What you perceive, let him have it, Chris, to mean, and then well, whatever the majority <laughs> verdict is, is what should have happened. Might have, that might. That happened anyway. But okay. Right. See, I'm not even sure he said it. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, <laughs> we can't even establish that. <laughs> let's assume that he did. No. It's it's okay. fasc- it's absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Because you've got to take into yeah. so many. You before you even think about what he said, you've got to take into account loads of different things, like yeah. mental age and the three age. and the three key officers that claim that he said it uh, weren't didn't give evidence and weren't present in court oh right <laughs> so <it's not laughs> actually, no. yeah. oh, okay well anyway forget about that we're going to do it on the <laughs> on the basis that apparently he said it um okay his the person who said it's mental age whether that comes into it or not i'm not sure it does um he had been arrested um the policeman had said, "What had he said? Give me, give me the gun, son, or something." And yeah. Hand it over. Hand lad. it over, lad. Right. Okay. So, and then Derek Bentley said, "Let him have it, Chris," or "Let him have it, Chris," or 
let him have it, Chris. Or, uh, <laughs> let him have it, Chris. Yeah. Or, Sis. oh, let him have it, Chris. Um, <laughs> the You can say it in different ways. Anyway, mm. what do you think? <laughs> if it was definitely said, and in the context of that conversation... We're assuming that he said it. Yeah, hand it over, lad. And he says, let him have it, Chris. In, within the context of that, it's give him the gun. Yeah. So what other context? Not, not pass him a couple of bullets really, really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other context would there be? The, uh, kind of angry, as angry in, context. Yeah, in, in the colloquial, let him have it, you know. Well... Shoot at them. I know what I think, but I can persuade myself <laughs> to go the other way. <laughs> yeah, easily, yeah. Um, now, for instance, I'll go next. But as it can't be determined... Yes, it can't be determined in his like against him. Mm. It must be proven to be uh, to be guilty of sure. intending yeah, to shoot yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. Now you could say, as you said in the let him ha- let him have it. The um, you could, for instance, Chris Craig, who's apparently well into, you know, I don't know, uh, Jimmy Cagney, mm. mob, whatever films. Hey, wait a minute! I mean, that's a classic, as far as I'm, I'm aware line yeah. that could have been said and he would have gone well hey I'm going to shoot him but if you take into account who was saying it and what what he was doing at the time i.e. he'd just been arrested and the fact that someone in authority had just said hand it over son I, I think Derek Bentley would have reverted to the someone in authority's meaning to have mm. hand it over son by saying yeah. Let him have it, Chris. In yeah. that way, mm. right? Yeah. So that's two. It, that's two votes. <laughs> are we, are we and, in agreement? Me and you. And, well, it, in that it, it can't be proven that he intended for him to kill <laughs> oh, him. Oh, sh- shut up with so, that rubbish! <laughs> <laughs> we can't hang someone on what we think. Yeah, no, I know. Don't worry. It, it was ages ago. <laughs> um, go on then. Oh. No, basically, the thing is that he w- Bentley was already in custody and he was standing next to the officer who had yep. him in custody. I mean, even out of self-preservation, why would you encourage someone to shoot in your direction? And that's, that's before, true, you, yeah. even I if you're that. unaware, even if you're unaware that, that the bullets were so inaccurate that the bullet was exactly. just as likely we've, killed you. Yeah. We've just been talking about the inaccuracy of the weaponry setup, but at no point yeah. would he have considered that. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. But you may also have been naive enough to think that if someone pointed a gun and pulled the trigger, they would shoot who they are intending yeah, yeah. to shoot. Yeah, I mean, well, I would. Yeah, not him. I would. You know. I'd be like, well, that, I mean, that six foot radius thing, I mean, that's, to me, it's like, well, yeah. that's absolutely ridiculous. I thought it was a gun, not a kind of slingshot kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, slingshot's or, probably more or, accurate. Or an old lady <laughs> throwing a cricket ball, kind of, you know. It's <laughs> meaning, meaning I thought guns, you pointed or it. Or me throwing a cricket ball. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you point guns, and how far away were they, by the way? Do it from Four, 30 feet, roughly, wasn't it? 35, so 39 quite, feet. I suppose it? that's quite yeah. a long way, isn't it? And how, just out of interest, how far away was the chap who got shot between the Ah, it's the same kind of distance. Yeah, broadly speaking, yeah. Really? Yeah. Jesus. So that was one in a... They, they, they claimed that Fairfax was shot point blank when he clearly wasn't. Oh, OK. Because he wasn't... It, it didn't even draw blood. It tore his... In the shoulder, yeah. The, the shoulder of his jacket. Oh, yes. And then went around his shoulder and fell on the floor behind him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. Which could only have happened from hitting the ground in front of him and bouncing up. Yeah. Ah, oh, right, right. So given... Given yes. that um, Bentley would have been in the firing line, the the next thing to consider is obviously he had the mental age of a child. You know, he was yes, un, you know, an underdeveloped faculty. He wouldn't have considered, oh, I'm in the firing line. Yeah, I mean, but also subtle nuances wouldn't have occurred to him either. And it's no. like this this gangster speak, you know, this phraseology. No. What he would have used? No, it's not the slightest. So I'm inclined to say to agree with with the perspective that he would have yielded to authority. He'd already turned himself in. He was under arrest. He had exactly. That's my point. He he had submitted to a person of authority. I mean, kind of forget. I mean, don't forget about the fact that he's a policeman. I reckon he would have done it if someone had said, "I'm the manager of this sweet shop." 
<laughs> Please stop. <laughs> and he would have stopped, basically. Quite probably, Do you think? yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Probably, yeah. So are we, is this, um, what do you call so, it? Uh, majority, no, yeah. Clean sweep. Unanimous, unanimous. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clean sweep. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. So we're unanimous. So hang on, what would, would that have changed? <laughs> Say that was our outcome. Mm-hmm. Would see someone still died? It kind of it's immaterial, isn't it? Really? Well, it's manslaughter. Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. think there's any. I don't think we can argue against him having killed him. No, 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 no. No. So but what we're doing now is we're looking at it through the lens of. Today, yeah, yeah. At the so time, so back then, if you shoot someone and they die, you what? You you're guilty and you hang. Well, yes, but Bentley was tried as a accomplice, as a party to the crime of murder. Yes, yes. Now they were there under what was called joint enterprise. Basically, they were both there to commit a burglary. Any actions that come out of that is all afforded the same uh, umbrella. So the fact that Craig shot Miles doesn't matter. It doesn't doesn't matter in the sense that Bentley, wherever his part in that, because he, he was still going to be a party to that portion of the the crime. So if Chris Craig was twenty seven, yes, for the sake of argument, yeah. what what would the the outcome? Well, Chris Craig would have hanged basically. Wouldn't they, he? they both would have hanged. They yeah. both would have hanged. Wow, seems yeah. a bit harsh, but the. Yeah, well, it was but, it was murder. But the point of the, it is joint enterprise. Yes, they were effectively he was accessory to murder, and yeah. and for that he hanged. Yes. Now, whether he should have hanged as for being an accessory is a, is another question. But at the time, there wasn't a great deal uh, of sympathy in the court. I don't think. I think the wider public view was that. Hanging a mentally deficient teenage boy is probably not a a great uh, justifiable cause. Yeah, but I think the the view in the courtroom was uh, someone's got to pay. Yeah, you know? right, 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 right. So people just yeah, fine, kind of mm. wow. Yeah. So I mean, as far as as far yeah, as the public yeah. was concerned, this was controversial even then. As I say, hanging a teenage yes, mentally deficient. Right. Yeah, okay. That not not in our name, kind of thing. Is that why we're talking about it? Yeah. Because if you think about it, the what they did, all right, fine. It, uh, up at, right up until they, one of them murdered a policeman. Yeah. W- what they were doing was effectively not much. Yeah. Then, by pure luck or brilliant skill, uh, one of them murdered a policeman. So therefore, it instantly became. Would that have made it the high profile? That it was, but it, 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 it isn't, is it? It's the fact that some someone else had yeah. for the crime. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason it has, had the profile then and the reason we still talk about it now is because the person who committed the crime went to prison for 10 years. The person who didn't commit the crime was hanged. Yes, right. right. They were both teenagers. Yes. The, one who, the one who hanged, basically, because he didn't commit the crime, he surrendered. And he was slow of mind. Yeah, he yeah. hanged. Whereas the the Jack the lad, the sixteen year old who did the killing, the career criminal already at sixteen, he got ten years and he was free. I am a free man. Oh wow, well, wow. that's and that he really about. was. Off, off you go, son. There was absolute because yeah. when because when you become, it's got it's nothing to do with the fact that two years later he he was an adult. And then certain things apply. It's got nothing to do with that, is it? He, it's all about when, how old he was at the time. Yeah, and and when he would have gone to um, a, a juvenile, yeah, whatever Initially. that would be, a ball store, and then Initially. at eighteen yeah, yeah. go to Gosh, prison. Yeah. Um, and he, so at twenty six, hmm. he was let out, was he? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's, I think we're still talking about this case also because it subsequently came went on to be one of the turning point cases for the you know, the abolition of uh, capital punishment. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, it should have been, but it, it, it definitely, actually... absolutely. Right. Now, there, well, there's three cases that are quite distinct, and are usually the ones that are brought up in in referring to, you know, this is why we don't have capital punishment anymore. Yes. Yes. Now, one of them is this. So hanging okay. of, of 
Bentley. One of them is uh, Ruth Ellis, who we've already talked about. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Now, she absolutely did shoot... Yeah, I was going to say, why? David uh, Blakely. That was open and shut, wasn't it? Yes, but she was... uh, It was an abusive relationship. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, again, in certain mitigation, she might have got, you know, uh, imprisonment or something like that. Do you think today, today she would have... That was definitely murder murder one, wasn't it? But I was going to say, today, given her circumstance... it yeah. would have been different. Yeah, it, again, it's a it's a modern take. I on think it, it would have been. It? She would yeah, have yeah. got imprisonment. Uh, so I mean, obviously, we don't have capital punishment, but in, with, with this mitigation, she would have may, may, maybe got a clemency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And, and the other case isn't that the um, the other incidental victim of John Christie in Ten Rillington. Absolutely right. Now that's the number one oh, because okay. oh, Timothy oh, right. Timothy Evans. Uh, was hanged yeah. for the murder of his child, I think, possibly wife and child, which he w- he confessed to because he was, again, a little bit slow and he was distraught. He confessed oh, to their yes. murder and he was hanged for it, but he didn't do it. It was Chris- It later turned out that Christie, who was a serial killer and his landlord, had c- committed the crimes, along with a number of other crimes. So, for instance, the, the Roos Ellis uh, example... There are many examples, none of which I can name, um, where, for instance, a wife literally murders husband, mm. uh, but there are reasons behind it and years of suffering and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. in certain cases, in, in, they're literally just let off. Yes. You know, they're charged with something, they're in, it's suspended for you know, since day one of, you know, the time that they're meant to serve. But they're effectively just instantly let off, even though yeah. they may have plotted and killed yeah. wife or husband or whatever. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's been considered like a justifiable or it's like I killed them before they killed me kind of because of that right. whole abusive right. situation. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and I had to take time to plan it because if I just run at him and failed, then he yes. killed me. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's circumstances that argue that out. I mean, it's a it's a a dangerous road to walk down. But sure, uh, yeah. yeah, it has been successful in the past. And that's exactly what she Ruth Ellis was enduring, basically, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. But I mean, again, it's one of those things where she went there with the intention of killing him. She was asked, "What did you intend?" And basically, it was an open shut case. What did you intend? I, I intended to kill him. So she yeah. stood in the dock and said that I that was my intention. It's not I was shooting at him to stop him from hurting me, or I was, you know. She went there. She saw him. She met up with him, and she shot him. And she shot him five times. So while he was on the um, ground, yeah. So and obviously, you know, at the time, that's given what you got for doing that. It yeah. was quite bad and admitting it. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, that, that was in 1960s. So at the time we're talking about here, 50s and 60s, there wasn't a great deal of wiggle room in sentencing either. So right. most most of the time, it's if you're found guilty of murder, you hang. That's it. You can't so, say, "Well, um, I'm going to I'm going to give you clemency, and you'll go to prison. You'll get 15 yeah. years or life or whatever." You can't say that at the time. You um, couldn't. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you literally hang, couldn't. Yeah. So where? Um, so hang on. Is is Chris Craig like alive? Yeah, I think so. He's still alive. I think so. It would well. He was. He is. It'd be in his eighties or something. Oh yeah. He can't be still alive, surely. As of two thousand and six, there's no deaths registered, apparently. So he was alive in two thousand and six. So, but there's literally no information about him. If you go onto Wikipedia and put Christopher Craig, it redirects to yeah. Bentley. Yes, it does, doesn't it? There's nothing. By all accounts, of which there are few. Um, yes. is, he was a law-abiding citizen after that. Right. Uh, it's obviously quite a way before our time, but quite regularly in the news, um, his sister, presumably on the anniversary of his death or something like that, well, understandably, she tirelessly campaigned for his pardoning, probably. She campaign for presumably and that would be quite quite a regular thing they campaigned for him to be pardoned and then when he was pardoned in i think 1993 
yeah. 46 years yeah. later. Yeah. Then they continued to campaign, but now for his uh, exoneration. Where does the word quash fit in? Quash, that's a good word, yeah. I just, I just wanted to say it, but I know it fits in It fits in, in on the label on the front of an orange drink bottle. From, <laughs> from, the, from the 80s. A bottle of quash. Big news quash! Now if you follow my jive and get hit to my verse, only quash can quench the big bad thirst. Big new quash! So no, obviously serious. pardoning means that you're guilty, but you've been excused. No, what okay. they're looking for was conviction overturned, which means that it was a miscarriage of justice and that you were I mean, I su- I mean, wrongly you could argue, or... You could argue both are correct, really, can't you? If you go on the old joint enterprise thing, you're guilty, but... Yeah. What did you say? You're guilty, but we're letting you off. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting because, I mean, obviously that, that conviction overturning did take place wasn't it ninety? Wasn't it ninety eight? Yes. And it was. Yes, you're right. Ninety eight. I don't know why I've. Oh right, I don't. Know, I had that in my in my mind. Is that Iris Bentley, sister, lived to see the pardoning? Yes. But not the. But not the. Quash. Overturning. Yeah. The quashing. Oh. Quash. <laughs> the quash. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a shame. And arguably, it is for her, because it's not for anybody else. No, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. No. For him, because he's dead, he's like, you know, it's irrelevant. Let's put a down on the... <laughs> yeah, well, you don't care. On, on the merry celebration that we're having. You can't, you can't let him off, forgive him, or no. say he's innocent, you know, 50 years after he's dead. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can. But for his, for his family, it might be symbolic. Well, it, well, it will um, be. There's no might be about it. But once, but once they're, you know, once the living sure. memory is yeah, gone, no. it, what, you know, there isn't really any healing to be done yeah you should have been the uh in my view you anyway. should have been the defense uh lawyer <laughs> on that yeah. re-examining the case i mean everyone's probably forgotten about it <laughs> <laughs> your honor so, what are we doing here <laughs> yeah i remember i remember it well it, it made the news i reckon it was in the news every single year yeah. on an anniversary presumably and she that's all she wanted to do obviously was to yeah to get him off here's a uh, controversial opinion oh, yeah. i don't think is it yours yes i don't think he should have had his conviction overturned controversial uh, pardon do you think yes, it should be fine. pardoned yeah. yeah that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying about there's arguments you can argue for both yeah uh, but anyway go on i dread to well, think <laughs> your t- no just think your take well look no i'm interested no the yes. thing is that the, it's, thing the thing is, it's it's a miscarriage of justice is. from Here's our viewpoint. You know, uh, many years later. It, yes, it is. But he was convicted and sentenced under the law at the time. Yes. Perfectly appropriately, he was passed. So it, it, was, was, it was all It was completely in. and utterly, yeah. I yeah. Agree. yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. we now yeah. have the kind of mitigation and the kind of thought that says, you know, he, that maybe that's not the way it should have gone. But... That's hindsight. Yes, I agree. You know, that's hindsight. Yeah, no. From a 50 I mean, you could, year you, later you could, viewpoint. Yeah, sure. I mean, you could say that about thousands and thousands and thousands of cases. Like in 1489, when a yeah. woman uh, didn't sink in a river, they thought yeah. she was a witch, so they burned her alive. And it's like, yeah. well, hang on, this is dreadful. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> Whistling on a tree. <laughs> but, every, yeah. but everyone... <laughs> you bastard. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone at the time would have gone, hooray, you know, and loved every second yeah. of it. Because they burned a completely innocent woman alive. Yeah. Um, and that was but, mentally ill, but it was... Oh, but it was such a fun law. afternoon. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But it was... I mean, it probably wasn't law, was it? It was just what they made up. But Yeah, well, the, I wouldn't stone a person to death, but that is the law today in some countries, that people get would, stoned. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you, though? Yeah. And not the good kind what? of stone, like the actual wouldn't having rocks know. thrown at you kind. Yeah, exactly. And that is today. Yeah, that's yeah, today. Yeah. I mean, that's law in those yeah. countries, and... You know, how are we supposed to react? I mean, you're you're right. The if you uh, consider the what occurred and consider the law at, in 1953, exactly the right thing happened. Yeah, uh, and you can't. You literally can't get around it, really. Yeah, unless you have a, le- a lenient judge who decides to his own take. Yeah, but. A- yeah, yeah, if you look at the text of this court, this was not a lenient judge. Right. Oh, okay. He was clearly, yeah. clearly steering the jury towards a guilty conviction. 
I, st I can't hold with the idea that because you can't hang the person who shot him, that you hang the person that's with him. No. That that's not, no. I know. I mean, no, absolutely. I don't, I'm not. I'm not. That, I mean, it's, that's not a defendable no, argument. It is. I would I wouldn't say that. But what I would say is that they would they would push for the maximum outcome, whether that's justified or justifiable. But you know, and certainly not in no, the, agree, not yeah. in the terms of well, we can't get him, so we'll get him. It's basically. He, he yeah, was still under the law. Par that's revenge, not justice. Exactly. You know. And he was still party to the crime. He was still eligible to be found guilty and the outcome of which was hanging. So that, in that sense, the law was followed. That's my opinion! And joint enterprise is a phrase, yeah. a lawful phrase, basically. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's obviously what they were, the whole point of it, yeah. hinging on that. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I know I've, I've ventured forth a controversial opinion, but I will qualify it once again by saying absolutely from our current standpoint where, you know, where we are now in 2021. No, I don't think he should have mm -hmm. should have hanged. I think that it could have taken a different course. But at the time, that was the law and that's the way it went. So to to then to use our, our hindsight from now to say, oh, well, he was wrongly convicted. Well, was he wrongly convicted? No, I don't think so. But he pardoned him, absolutely. And as you said, Rue, right. effectively, you know, he's, <laughs> he's got no benefit from it. It's not like he can be let off early, no. you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a BBC, uh, well, it's, oh gosh, uh, who wrote it? It was a very famous, I can't remember his name now, really famous British playwright wrote the screenplay. How long ago? And the BBC put it out. Oh, this is... Yeah, so To Encourage the Others is 1972. Oh, right. Why is it called that? I don't, I don't know. I can't work out what... I mean, to yeah. discourage the others, I'd get. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely. Yeah. 1972. It's a bit of an odd. Uh, Alan Clark, that's ah, right. right. Yeah, yeah, nice. Playing Fairfax was oh, yeah. an old colleague of mine's father... Michael Sheard, an who we will of yours all know. Father. Yeah, there's an old colleague of mine, his father, um, late father, yeah. um, who we will all know and our international listeners will know yes. as Admiral Ozzel from Empire Strikes Back. Ooh. The fleet has moved down to flight speed and we're preparing to... You have failed me for the last time, Admiral. <laughs> Michael well. Sheard. Yeah, uh... and we... Us Brits will lovingly remember him as Mr. Bronson. Oh, oh of course. From Grange Hill. <laughs> really, really. So hang on, you're Excellent. you used to work with a and bloke all, who and it, it was his yeah, dad. Yeah, with his son. Yeah, I used to work with his oh, son. That's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> wow. That's that's really Jesus. good. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> lovely fella. <laughs> what else was he in? Uh, he was in other stuff. Oh, oh it was in many episodes of Doctor Who. Yes. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, was um, he? Oh, I didn't he, know that. He might have been in Blake 7 at one point. <laughs> Probably. All of those. At that period, if you were on screen, you were in everything. In all of that, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, that's excellent. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, he played Adolf Hitler. Oh, yes, oh, that's right. true. Yeah, you signed the book. He also it? went to play Adolf Hitler in another movie as well, a proper... Really nasty Adolf Hitler, oh which he was very good at. <laughs> He's very good at <laughs> a, a nasty Adolf Hitler. Not like the actual Adolf <laughs> yeah. Hitler. Something for the CV. I, um, I'm noted for playing a particularly nasty Adolf Hitler. Uh, if you need a nice one, don't come to me. The um, uh, Yeah, he definitely, 70s, 80s. Yeah. He he got yeah. around basically in a in a good in a good way, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. hang on, he yeah. was in what was the name of your film who I, that I'm convinced has got nothing to do with uh, <laughs> Billy and Craig? Your, <laughs> to encourage the to others. To encourage the others. I mean, yeah. it's a I terrible, don't know where that title terrible title. It is. Yeah. Do we know if it was a good movie? It's not bad. Um, it was released twice. And I think on the second occasion, they cut out a couple of the bits which were a bit more tenuous. Yeah, okay. Ha having um, but having learnt from the first release, the controversy yeah. from the first release. Yeah. It's quite... Um, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's straight down the facts, but it's pretty close. The, um, but, it's quite, I suppose it was quite a long time after, 19 years after. But I bet it, mm. I bet it would have been a bit close, close yeah, to I the bone. It would still be in fresh memory, I think. Yeah. Um, you could, you could obviously 
interpret it various ways basically make make them look guilty or make them look completely hard done by but mm. but anyway yeah. I obviously don't know which way they went but. yeah so um that's 1972 so in 1991 yes uh the movie let him have it was released christopher so eccleston christopher eccleston as bentley mm-hmm. and um paul reynolds as chris craig um, it also features Michael Elphick as a prison guard, which is quite yeah. interesting. Hey. Yeah. But um, I, I really like it. I mean, both of those movies, I think, are broadly rated the same. And I don't think either, certainly Let Him Have It, was not a big box office commercial success. No. But, but I think it's a, nonetheless a, a, a very watchable movie. It's a very good movie. I enjoy it. I mean, to be fair, I don't think it was ever going to be massive hit I mean well it's not the summer blockbuster certainly no not exactly <laughs> but yeah um <laughs> okay 91 was I will tell you the biggest film of 1991 Terminator 2 ah uh, yeah well, it probably was and uh followed by Robin Mega Hood film. Prince of Thieves ah oh, of course Mary Elizabeth Mastro Antonio the course, um yeah, yeah. T- <laughs> T2 is an absolutely mega film Remember yeah. that so well, come it waiting it, for that to come out. Is it better than Let Him Have It? <laughs> That's the question on um, everyone's lips. Yeah. So hang on, is Let Him Have It in the in on the list? No. No. Of course, <laughs> course it isn't. It, no, no. Of course it isn't, no. No. But um, yeah, there you go. Oh, I don't know. That's all for this time. If you want to know more about what we've discussed over the course of this episode, just Google it or something. You can see daily true crime updates on our Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. You can email us or you can support the show with a PayPal donation. And links to all of those are on our website at truecrimediary.co.uk. Don't forget to send us a review or post one in your podcast service if you can. And all five star reviews will get a shout out on a future episode. Join us next time when we'll be similarly discussing and digressing on another event in true crime history. Until then, my thanks to Jed and Rue. My name's Mark and we'll see you on the next date in our true crime diary.